I seek refuge in Allah. I seek refuge in Allah. The all hearing, all knowing from Satan, from Satan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله The Messenger of Allah صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم has stated that a person who forgets to recite the rood upon me has forgotten the way towards paradise. So we should try to remember to recite the rood upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as much as we can. Remember the ruling that it is fard obligatory upon every single Muslim to recite the rood at least once in his life. And if you are sat in a gathering, if you are sat in a, sat in a mehfil, a majlis, then it is wajib, necessary for you to recite the rood upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at least once when his name is mentioned. And it is mustahab and preferred that you recite the rood every single time you hear the mention of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember the more the rood you recite, the better it is for you. The better it is for you in this world and the better it is for you in the hereafter. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala Ila Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Welcome back to the program, The Deadly Sins, in which we talk about those sins which cause the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those sins which remove spirituality from an individual, those sins which take a person away from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those sins which make the path towards paradise difficult and the path towards the fire of hell easy for him, and ultimately those sins which can cause a person to lose his iman. Now the topic of today is something which is found very common within our society. And there are many ways a person can indulge in this sin. It is very accessible. A person can go through the means of social media, through the means of his friends, through the means of uh, other ways to gain this sin. And that is finding faults within the Muslims. Without a valid reason, finding faults and expressing them, revealing them to people is haram. And this is forbidden and condemned in the religion of Islam. Because Islam is such a beautiful religion, that not only where it protects a person's wealth, not only where it protects a person's nasab lineage, it also protects a person's honor and dignity within the people, within society. So to learn about how our pious predecessors used to uh, hide the faults of others, let's look at no other than the great Imam, Nu'man bin Thabit, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, and how he would try his best to hide the faults of his Muslim brothers. It has been stated that Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa uh, was given a very special power because within sainthood, within spirituality, there are ranks. And the higher rank a person achieves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him with more powers. Now you might think this is some sort of mystical fairy tales, etc. But no, the awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah, those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors with his friendship and Allah ta'ala honors with his ma'rifah recognition, they have a very high status and they are able to perform those things which to a non common person might seem impossible, might seem difficult, might seem like uh, it is not uh, uh, something a human can do, but the awliya, the special people of Allah Ta'ala have been granted these powers. So once Sayyidina Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah went to the wudu area of his jami masjid, his local masjid, he used to go and pray there. And once he was there performing wudu, and there were people around him who was performing wudu as well. And he was looking at an individual. And from the droplets of water which were dripping off him, Sayyidina Imam Azam said to that person, Oh my son, repent from disobeying your parents. The young man replied, I have repented. Then he saw drops of water dripping from another person. And Sayyidina Imam Azam said, Oh my brother, 
repent from fornication. And then he seen another person, and from the droplets of water which were dripping, Sayyidina Imam Azam was able to see that what sin that person commits. And he said to the third person, Oh my son, repent from drinking alcohol. And that man replied, I repent from this sin. When Sayyidina Imam Azam, rahimullah, he left that wudu area, he left that place, he went and he raised his hands in the court of Allah Ta'ala, and he said, Oh Allah, I do not want this ability to, to be able to see the sins of people. I do not want to see the faults of people. And when he made this dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala veiled, put that veil back in the eyes of Imam Azam and he was unable to see the faults of others. Subhanallah, this was the mindset of our pious predecessors that if through their spirituality, the, through their spiritual powers, they were able to see the sins of others, they were able to see the faults of others, but they did not like the fact that they were able to do so. And they asked in the court of Allah Ta'ala, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala took that bestowment He gave upon them back. Now, what does this teach us? This teaches us that even when we are able to see the faults of others, even when we can clearly see the faults of others, if there is no valid reason, we should hide their faults. We should conceal their faults. Because a person who does not hide the faults of other people, it is possible that Allah Ta'ala will reveal his sins, his faults, his wrongdoings and shortcomings upon the people. And remember, when Allah Ta'ala becomes angry with somebody, when Allah Ta'ala becomes displeased with somebody, then there is nobody who can save that person. And in relation to finding faults in others, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has stated in Surah Al-Hujarat, part 26, verse 12, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا And do not look for faults. Sayyidina Mufti Muhammad Naimuddin Murad Abadi Rahimullah has said that do not pick out the faults within the Muslims, nor be in search of hidden information about a Muslim. Remember, Allah Ta'ala's verse, one of the qualities Allah Ta'ala has is that He is Sattar. Allah Ta'ala is the one who conceals. If Allah Ta'ala is concealing the faults of others, if Allah Ta'ala is commanding us not to find faults in others, not to look for things which might intrigue your attention and uh, you might express it to others, refrain from this. Remember, whichever commandment Allah Ta'ala gives us through the Holy Quran or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is better for us. Now somebody might say, what harm or what benefit does one gain from following the rules of Sharia? Remember, if you do not follow the acts of Sharia, if you do not follow the rulings of Sharia and you look for faults in others, remember there are billions of people who also these rules apply to. So if you do not want to follow the rule, then remember you cannot complain when so many other people do not follow that rule as well. Meaning where Allah Ta'ala is telling you not to find faults in others, He is also commanding the rest of the Muslims to do so as well. So that way, where you are protecting others, Allah Ta'ala is protecting billions from you. So this is the beauty of Islam that a rule applies to everybody. And within that rule, there is safeguarding, there is peace, there is security for the Muslims. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has stated, good news, glad tidings is for that person who has prevented from finding faults with others due to his own faults. Meaning a person who is occupied in finding his own faults, a person who is occupied in rectifying himself. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving him a glad tiding. The Messenger of Allah is giving him a good news that there is safety for you, that there is glad tiding for you, that there is a sense of peace for you. Why? Because you are stopping yourself from looking at the faults of others. Remember, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu has stated that whenever you wish to talk about the evils of people, whenever this evil thought arises in your heart, whenever you have this inclination to look for faults within others, to look for evils within people, then remember your own evils. 
then remember your own faults, then remember all the things that you are hiding. You might have found a sin about somebody, you might have found a fault within a person which he did in privacy, which he did in his room, which he did away from the eyes of people and you somehow were able to get information on that. Remember there are things that you do in privacy. Remember there are sins that you do in places where nobody can see you. Yet Allah Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the most merciful, the most compassionate has hidden your faults as well. So just like how you do not want your sins, your faults to be revealed on other people, other people do not like the same thing happening to them. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a person came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, give me permission to commit fornication. And the Prophet said, how would you like it if somebody was to do it with your mother? And he said, I would not like it. Then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, just how you wouldn't like it with your mother. Other people do not like it with their mothers. Then the Prophet asked about his sister, his auntie, the women within his family. And he gave the same answer. And the Prophet said each time, just as how you do not like it, other people do not like it as well. Similarly, just as we do not like our sins and faults to be exposed to people, other people also don't like this as well. Sayyidina Hassan Basri rahmatullah has stated, O son of Adams, you cannot grasp the essence of faith. You cannot grasp the beauty, the completion of faith until you stop searching for the faults within people. You start rectifying yourself and distance them from you. When you do, not, when you do this, only then will you be the favorite of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Mujahid alayhi has said that when a person, he mentions something good about his brother, or he makes a prayer for his brother behind his back, then the angels come to that person and say, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this in your behalf first before your Muslim brother. And similarly, when a person, he speaks ill about a brother, when he praise, dispraises him behind his back, when he says bad things, bad qualities behind his back, then the angels once again come and they say that, May this be accepted in your behalf before your Muslim brother. So sometimes we feel like we, are, we, are, we do not do things, but still bad happens to us. And one of the reasons could be that you wish harm upon other people. You wish bad upon other people and that in return comes to you. So many sins that a person thinks bad about other people and he does not have those qualities. So that same thing reapplies to him and he becomes in a state of distress and trouble. Sayyidatuna Rabi'a, Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha used to say, when a person tastes the love of Allah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala makes him aware of his own faults, so he does not pay attention to the faults of others. Remember the path of Islam, the path of spirituality, the path of taqwa, is that a person rectifies himself, that a person, he sorts his inner self out, he sorts his nafs out that, that evil which is inside us, which keeps telling us to do bad deeds, which keeps telling us to commit sins, which keeps telling us to go on the wrong path, we must control that, self, uh, that nerves. And a person who is always occupied in rectifying himself, he will not have time to look at the faults of other people. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبَّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam said, None of you is a true believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Meaning, just as how you want to be treated, just as how you want to be respected, just as how you want to be honored, the same way, the very same way, your Muslim brother desires the same thing. Your Muslim brother wants the same, so you should give him what he wants. It is stated in a hadith of Qudsi that astonishing, amazing, it is ajeeb, it is something unusual that a person is busy finding faults in others when he has faults within himself. Meaning a person, no person except the Messenger of Allah and the Anbiya are perfect. So when a person is imperfect himself, then how can he point fingers at somebody else? How can he say something bad about somebody else when he has so many things within himself? The scholars have said that it is easy to look at that plank in the eye of other, but you cannot see the splinter in your own eye. Meaning that a person, 
he forgets, he looks over the faults within himself, but it's very easy to pick up on the faults of others. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has given a lot of glad tidings, has given a lot of beautiful uh, basharat, good news for that person who has the faults of another. In a hadith it is stated, one who sees the hidden fault, it is not even an open fault, but a, a hidden fault, and then conceals it. He is like that person who has saved a girl from being buried alive. Subhanallah, such a great advantage, such a great glad tiding for the person who hides the fault of others, that in the era of jahiliya, in the era of ignorance, when people would have daughters, they would bury their daughter. This is a problem which is seen today as well, that when people have daughters, they become displeased. They are not happy that they have a daughter. Remember, Allah Ta'ala blesses the Prophet Sallallahu with the best of things. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu is the best of creation and Allah Ta'ala only grants the best to the Prophet Sallallahu And remember our Prophet, our beloved, our master, he was blessed with daughters and he had more daughters than he had sons. So it is the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. It is the blessing of Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala has given daughters to us, that Allah Ta'ala has blessed you with a daughter. Never for even a second think that a daughter is a burden. Never for even a second think that you have been mistreated by being given a daughter. It is the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. It is the fadl and the blessing of Allah Ta'ala. So a person who hides the faults of others it is as if he has taken a buried girl out of her grave and he has saved her. It is another hadith that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends to do good with a mu'min, when Allah ta'ala intends to do good with a bondsman, with a slave, then he gives him the recognition to find the faults within himself. He makes him aware of his own faults. And another hadith, it has been stated, مَنْ سَطَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَطَرَهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Subhanallah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, مَنْ سَطَرَ مُسْلِمًا Whoever conceals a Muslim, whoever hides the fault of a Muslim, سَطَرَهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will conceal him, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will hide his sins on the Day of Judgment. And undoubtedly that is the day when we would all want our aids, we would all want our sins, faults, defects to be hidden. Remember today, we might embarrass somebody in front of our group of people. We might embarrass somebody within our family, within five, six, ten people, twenty people, or through social media, a couple of hundred, a thousand people. But on the day of judgment, when the whole mankind from Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, the first ever human to be created and placed on this earth, till the last human being will be present there. Imagine the embarrassment you will have to face then. So when you weigh the two that the embarrassment you are giving to somebody in this world, and the embarrassment that you can be caused on the day of judgment, then the better option, then the more appropriate option is that you do not, you do not reveal the sins of other people. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyidina Reesa Ruhullah ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu wa salam was once with his companions and he said if you find your brother sleeping in a state that the wind has removed his clothes that he is sleeping in an open ground and or even within his yard of his house and wind blows and it removes his clothes it exposes that brother what will you do? The companions of Isa alayhi salatu was salam, they replied, we will keep it a secret and cover him. And Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam replied, but rather you will uncover him. And the companions surprisingly asked, oh Isa, how is such a thing? How will we do such a thing? And Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam replied, any of you who hears anything about his Muslim brother, then he exaggerates in it then he has committed a graver sin than exposing his Muslim brother. So this means that there are sins which a person might see and he might relate to others. This is bad in itself, but when you see the fault of a person, when you see the hidden thing, the, the, the sin of a person, and then you exaggerate it, you, you add your own spice to it, you want to make it sound better and then you convey it, 
This is worse for you than even the first uh, position that you were in. And this is something which is found within the people who have hatred for one another. It is found within those people who have problems and disputes that when they find something very small about that individual which could harm him, they exaggerate it, they spice it up and they spread it around. And Sayyidina Isa alayhi has said that this is worse than exposing a person bodily as well. Sayyidina Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah has stated, whoever has made his Muslim brother understand in private has advised him. Meaning that when you see a fault of people, there is a concept that I have seen somebody do something wrong now, I will advise him. Surely advise him, advising the Muslims help. The Quran tells us to advise but to remember, there is a manner of everything. There is a way of going about things. There is a way to do things. And Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah has said that a person who advises his Muslim brother in privacy has indeed advised him and graced him. And whoever has made him understand in front of people, whoever has openly advised him, has disgraced him. Sayyidina Miss Arbin Khidam rahmatullah alayhi said that do you like the person who cautions you of your faults? He replied, if he has advised me in private, I will like it. And if he has made me embarrassed within the people, then I would not like it. Remember, when you see the faults of your brother, if you think you telling him will solve the problem, then you should help him, you should advise him. But the way to advise him is that if he has done it in private, if you know that you can make it explain to him in privacy, then do so in privacy. But do not expose his sins. Even some people, they will, on the name of advice, will openly shame him within the people, will openly disgrace him within the people. This shows that your intention was not sincere. Your intention was not to uh, advise him, was not to guide him, but it was rather to belittle and disgrace him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to hide the faults of our Muslim brothers. And just as we hide the faults of others, may Allah ta'ala keep our faults hidden as well. Ameen bijahin nabi al-ameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. I seek refuge in Allah. I seek Refuge in Allah, the all-hearing, all-knowing, from Satan, from Satan.